called Change the Station. And uh, one time when I was teaching my senior class of students who were applying to college, most of them first in their family, and they were worried they weren't going to get in, I did something, uh, you know, to make a point. So one day, I was in the library with my class, and as part of a point I wanted to make, I told my seniors to turn to their neighbor and tell them they were not going to get into the college of their choice. And then tell them they weren't smart enough, good enough, and even ugly. They were ugly. Now, of course, they looked around like, you're crazy. There's no way I would do that. And they didn't, obviously, thank goodness. I've been talking to my students about an internal radio station that each of us have. When we're children, there doesn't seem to be a radio station at all, just a fresh sense of wonder at all the new things in life, and we want to learn and explore and see what's out there, and we start to ask, why, but why, but why, what is this? And we're curious. Through the years of bad programming, we tend to take things to heart, and certain thoughts begin to creep up and play over and over again in our mind. Thoughts that I, myself, struggled with, like, I'm not good enough. I'm ugly, I'm not smart enough, I'm fat, I don't like the way my whatever looks, my nose, my ears, my bald head. This beautiful little radio was something a student drew for me in order to help me make this point. So the students' reactions in this case were mixed. Most of the students looked around confused, like, are you kidding me? Like, there's no way I'm going to tell someone next to me this. Many of them were horrified and said, no, refusing to do it. A, stu a few students, perhaps too devoted, thinking I knew what I was doing, albeit to my horror, went ahead and said it. And many of them were sitting next to their friends, and we'd been in this program for several years together, so maybe that was why. And I noticed most of them were boys, and they were smiling. I don't know if that means anything. So I said to the students, you would never tell your friends, and even people you don't know or your enemies, these things. You wouldn't tell a stranger on the street these things. So how dare you say these things to yourself? Stop it. Stop telling these negative things to yourself. Stop letting these negative thoughts creep into your mind and make you feel terrible and miserable. As far as your college applications are concerned, you just need to be patient and wait and be optimistic. There's absolutely no benefit to beating yourself up and feeling terrible about yourself as you wait. So I ask you the same question. How is it that you would never tell your friends or family member, let alone a stranger, the negative things you tell yourself and that I used to tell myself? Yet somehow it has not only become okay, but a routine or a habit to tell yourself these things. Another day in the class, we were having a discussion and a stu student brought up a good point. She said, why is it that when we are complimented, we shrug it off so easily? But when we're put down, we take it to heart and carry it with us sometimes for the rest of our lives. We tend to be harder on ourselves than anybody else, and often that radio station or the little voice in your head is a negative one. Being in a negative mental state while we actually try to get on with life or try to improve ourselves is really hard to do. It's counterproductive and it's harmful to our own well-being. Imagine if you had a cheerleader or friends and family backing you and saying every step of the way in your journey in life, I know you can do it, I believe in you, or simply I'm proud of you. How much better would you be at whatever you set your mind to? Now think of the reverse, because this is what happens to us. What if your friends and family were saying, you can't do it, you're not good enough, you're fat, you're ugly, you're this, you're that, the things I would tell myself. But that's essentially what we do to ourselves. Perhaps it's because at one point or another some loved one or bully or enemy or stranger said these things to us and they stuck. They had to come from somewhere. And they replay over and over this radio station, especially when we feel the most human and the most vulnerable, do we hear it. These negative thoughts seem to creep up the most when we're not our best and feeling down. When you're happy and confident and things are going your way, you're less likely to hear those negative things. You don't say, you don't say them to yourself. Or when you hear them, they don't stick. You're less likely to compare yourself to anyone else or to get involved in anyone else's business, like gossiping and what students call talking smack, or they use another word.
streets, when we're the most vulnerable, when we are tired, when we're stressed, overworked, or disappointed that we compare ourselves to others, and the radio station goes on full blast. Right? Well, think about if you were on a beautiful island with beautiful sand and a blue water beach, no clouds in the sky, sipping iced tea, would you be thinking about criticizing someone else or would you be enjoying the moment? So anyway, I know firsthand what this is like. I was very insecure growing up. And because of my insecurity and feeling that I wasn't good enough, I tended to have a pretty horrible view of myself. And it wasn't mostly even real. I thought I was disgusting. I thought I was ugly. I saw every pimple and I magnified it to the size of a cherry tomato in my own mind. In sixth grade, having come back from Canada after a summer of visiting my grandparents, I was overweight and a little chubby. The first day of school, my friend looked at me with seriousness and conviction. He was, not, he was not even trying to be mean. That's what hurt the most. With the seriousness and conviction only a sixth grader could have and said, I never realized you had a double chin. I felt hot and dizzy and wanted to cry at that moment. And I'm sure I welled up with tears. And that was part of what created the Pandora-like or Spotify-like radio station of my body's negative self-image. Even later, when I was a marathon runner, I still didn't think I looked all right. And you know, what happened a day or two before that was I, when I came back from Canada, my dad was upset. He was upset that my grandma gave me all these great delicious cakes and cookies and all the food she was cooking, which was amazing food. And really, I should have had better self-control, if I'm honest. But I heard him sort of scolding my mother, how could, how could she do this to him? I'm never going to let him go back there again. And I thought he was serious. He was just frustrated in the moment and he was concerned about his son. But it created this negative self-image I had in my own mind where I just started that radio station and it kept playing and playing and playing. From then on, I was extremely self-conscious about how chubby I was. I was always feeling fat. I swam in the swimming pool with my shirt on and wouldn't take it off at the beach or in any pool. I tried my best to slip quickly in and out of my clothes in PE and made every excuse not to shower, feeling humiliated when I did. I think a lot of us have gone through that feeling. Years later, when I began running and lost weight, I became self-conscious of being too skinny, right? And the Buddhists say, too much, too little, too much, too little, never satisfied. So now I felt too skinny and then I started to get hair on my arms and I started to feel too hairy. I didn't like how big my nose was. I didn't like that I had what you would call a butt chin or a dimple. I had so many insecurities and the radio station ran wild in my head. And that was me when I came back from Canada. I was, it wasn't so bad. But in my mind I saw myself as disgusting. Looking back now I could see that I was a little bit crazy. I can look at the photo of my high school years and think that I was rather handsome and, and not to be, it's not to be arrogant, it's to say what was I thinking back then that I hated myself so much. But it doesn't really matter what you are, right? We're, we're beautiful and we have so much to offer, but it doesn't matter if we don't feel that way. Because when you're insecure, you're only what you feel that you are. And at the time, I felt ugly. And this is me in my senior portrait. And again, all I saw was my hairline and my nose and my chin and the pimples that really aren't as bad now in my older age. With the perspective I had, I wasn't that bad. So my point is that it's time to turn the radio station down. Or even better, to change the station to a more positive one and blast that volume and put it on repeat. This is something I've tried to do in my classroom back in the past. The year that I wrote this, I began telling my students, you're beautiful. I even wrote it in big, bold letters on the door, and maybe I need to write it again. Occasionally, I w would ask a student, what are you? And I, I was expecting the response because I kept doing it. Beautiful. And sometimes I would ask, what else? Hoping they would go on and tell me some other of their great qualities. And for boys, if they wanted to, I'm handsome. Or I'm awesome. I once asked my student to think about when they were a child, or think of any child. Aren't they cute? Aren't they beautiful? Yes. So what changes? It's only our perspective, our thinking. By our very nature, we are still beautiful and handsome, but all of the negative things we've been told from people we know, 
from strangers or from the media, from these images we get, begin to change our minds so we forget we are by our very own nature beautiful, handsome human beings. Whether or not someone thinks we're hot or attractive is a matter of personal preference and everyone finds someone beautiful and attractive. It's like choosing between Sprite and Coke or Dr. Pepper. Does it make one better than the other? Well, to some who like one or the other, it seems like it, but no. Often when we're immature, especially younger, if somebody doesn't like something that we like, we automatically think there's something wrong with it. If you don't like rap music, ew, gross, rap music is horrible, ew, gross, country music's gross. Right? That's immature. That's not true. You don't like it, but others do. When we're mature, we can understand that others have different tastes. Just because you don't like it doesn't mean it's bad. It's just not your taste. So the question is, how do we begin to change the station? You can help others to change their station by pointing out their finer qualities. And I don't mean lying to them, but actually vocalizing your thoughts and feelings to your friends, your family, especially younger ones, but even adults. When someone does something nice, you can say, that's so thoughtful of you. When someone you haven't seen in a while bumps into you, you could tell them how beautiful and handsome and awesome they are. You can ask them directly, what are you? Or do you know what you are? And tell them they're beautiful or smart or handsome or funny or a host of other things that you know that your friends and loved ones are. If we take what my friend told me as true, and even if it's not true, I believe in the principle of it, if you believe what they said is true, it takes several positive comments to balance out the negative ones. In fact, the study said that. So we need to get on it. What about yourself? Can you begin, your, begin to tell yourself the same? To write it down. Put sticky notes on your mirror in your refrigerator. I literally did this as an adult and it helped. I'm handsome. I'm beautiful. I'm strong. I can do this. I'm smart. I had a former student once tell me that he would often look in the mirror and loathe something about himself, but now he's gained more self-confidence. He's learned to change that station. And when those thoughts creep in, he says he looks in the mirror and has thoughts that pop, in head, pop into his head, or he used to, like, our eyebrows are gross. He verbally says to himself, I appreciate your opinion, but I disagree. He tells himself, he tells that voice, I appreciate your opinion, but I disagree. When you look in the mirror and say, oh man, your, your pimple, you're, you're so gross. You say, I appreciate your opinion, but I disagree. Slowly, he said, by doing that, he was able to stop the negative thoughts and change the station. I did it. I would put up sticky notes. I would tell myself, you could do this. In fact, in other times, it was what they call self-affirmation. Affirming something, reinforcing something is what that means. And you can get them. You can get daily affirmations on the internet if you'd like. But even when I was going through difficult times, I would say, I'm happy, I'm healthy, I have everything I need. Other times... Before I had more confidence, I would say, you're handsome, you're beautiful, you're good enough. You could do this, you're smart. Whatever it is, take whatever you're telling yourself and do the opposite and say the opposite by turning it into a positive. And so is this silly? It cannot be any more silly than how you treat yourself and how we s sort of leave that station on and let ourselves feel and become self-loathing and the way we hurt ourselves and the way we treat ourselves. So you can do this too. Catch the negative radio station. Be aware of it. And then change the station. Reverse it. What are some of the other ways we can change the station? One of the most important tools I found for getting out of my head and changing the station is doing something kind and helping others. Being aware of the needs of others and how we can be kind or compassionate towards those close to us, even to strangers. What it does a lot of the times is it gets you out of your head, it gets you out of the negativity, and it gets you to do and feel good about helping others. And even if it doesn't help you, you're helping someone else get better and feel better and to be better. And undoubtedly that'll make you feel good or help you in the long run. But it really does teach you about yourself. And it's, you're doing it because you're awesome. Because you are awesome. And helping other people really is awesome. We wouldn't be where we are today if people and our family and friends and even strangers didn't help us. So while it's not the only way, it's definitely a way that benefits you and those around you. And then in turn, those that they come in contact with, it spreads.
because a happy you and a more positive you will be more likely to create a positive environment and do more good things for yourself and for others and it will grow and build. So feel free to leave a comment and again change your station. What are you? I am beautiful or I am handsome or I am strong enough. And thank you to Angelica Gonzalez for her awesome painting of the radio and to Evelyn Quintana for her drawing, drawing of I Am Beautiful and for reminding us what we are. In fact, I was going to end, but what are we? We are awesome. We have more potential, more ability, more goodness, more talents than we'll ever know. And, and one of the problems is we don't believe it. So anyway, let's start changing the station. And then let's start creating better and newer stations that inspire us and others around us.